Oh, James here, and it uh, looks like the 12 volt battery on my Ionic 5 is finally packed in, or at least it's um, got no charge on it, so the car's completely dead at the moment, can't do anything with it. And I suspect I'm one of the last person on YouTube with an Ionic 5 with a battery issue. I just thought that I was immune to it <laughs> for whatever reason um, or maybe I was just in denial about the whole 12 volt battery saga but it's finally happened here I'm just going to find out what's up with it and then jump start the car hopefully and we'll just run through all the different scenarios of what it could have been obviously I do not know why it's happened and I've got a few speculations get the car started first and then we'll just uh, talk through why or how or the possibilities of why this has happened so to get back in the car you'll need your key and what you do is there's a little button at the back here if you press that down you can pull the key out right so to get into the car what we need to do is open here and then this part of the key goes in here it's a little bit fiddly because it's uh, not actually that much space to work with to go anti-clockwise a little bit of a struggle to do there we go so we're in the car power on nothing no power first off I jumped online and I got myself a nice CXY jump starter kit so this is the case it comes in it's quite a big case we open this up and if you press this button here it'll light up it's 100% and it's 12,800 milliamps and it's a thousand amp in power what else does it have it's got we open this flap here, it's got two USB ports, one's a USB 3 and then there's USB C which is for charging. Uh, there's a lamp here as well that you can switch it on and if we come in here this is where the clamps are and you will see that there is a little port on the side here and then all that does is you marry this part to here. You can't get it wrong because of the fittings. And you just push that in. There we go. And there we have it. And that's it. It's currently at 3.4 volts, which isn't good. It's way too low. So now we need to clamp this on the negative, black to negative. And over here, red to positive. Right, now that we've got that, what you need to do is press the power button and then hold this for three seconds. There you go, we're currently at 13.5 volts, so that's charging up nicely. And this is down to 26%. So you'll notice that the jump start kit was at 100% to start with and by the time we got the car going it was down to about 26%. So it seems like each time you try to use the unit, um, every time it fires, tries to fire up your vehicle, it takes up about 20 to 25% of the battery from the actual jump start kit. And the first time that I tried it, I took a little bit too long because I was messing around with the cameras and stuff and I missed the opportunity to press the start button in the car and the second time I tried it when I tried to fire the car up it lit up but it wouldn't start because I still had the type 2 cable plugged in so third time lucky and got the car started and it was down to 26% on the battery. So if you've got a full charge on this gadget here, on this jump start kit, you'd probably get about four tries of getting the vehicle started. So just be sure that if you do get this one, it takes about 20 to 25% of the battery within the actual unit itself to fire up the car. Okay, this is gonna be an interesting test. I'll 
I didn't think it was going to come in such a big bulky case. And we've got the vehicle to load case. I don't think it's as high as this. Need to see how well this fits under here. So we lift that up. Slide in. Oh, actually. So I've slid in there. Oh, yeah, it's going right down. What I have is the vehicle to load, jump starter kit, and the tyre repair kit that's under here. So there's plenty of space to fit that, which is handy. I'll need to recharge it back up. If I have the jump starter kit in the boot, and there's no power to the car, it's going to be a bit of a hassle getting into the boot of the vehicle, because it's a powered tailgate, and there's no quick release like the bonnet. So I was wondering if I could fit this in the front here. Check in here. So if it was there, I think if that's in the centre because of these nuts. There we go. And that fits. Actually, that's not bad. I might put it in the front. You know what? This granny cable I'll probably never use. So this is probably better off being in the boot. Instead of putting it in the boot, even though it fits, I think it might be better here. So currently I'm sitting in the car with the hood up. So the car's on and there's a 12 volt battery icon there. So that must be still low. So I'll have to wait for that to go, I think. So the story leading up to the 12 volt battery dying on us was we went down in the new year to visit family and that was down in Manchester. So that was about 500 odd miles away, a round trip and I can't see that being the problem with the car being on and driving. Did a lot of ultra fast charging as well. The only other thing is on the stock here, on here, on the light stock, I've actually, for some reason, because it's quite dark and the lights weren't coming on, I actually switched it on manual rather than auto. So I normally have it on auto mode, the lights. But for some reason, I decided to put it on full. So this might be one of the reasons. I don't see why it wouldn't actually turn the lights off anyway once we get out of the vehicle. So the other thing I thought, maybe it was this that was left on, but, you know, I mean, it's quite bright when you have it on. So I don't think it was that because... I mean, I did use it, but I'm sure I pressed this button to turn it off. So it's not been on all this time. Uh, or else I'm sure I would have noticed it driving around because after we got out of the car. So that's the only thing that I've done or done differently on this drive. So for one year and three months, I've had zero issues with a 12 volt battery, even though everyone else on YouTube seems to have an issue with Hyundai's 12 volt battery. Yes, yeah, so it's finally happened here. I don't really know why that is. I've never used the app to open the charge flaps or use the app for anything else apart from pre-warming the vehicle. It has to be some other sort of anomaly. Right, so we can come back tomorrow and uh, just basically see what happens with the vehicle. So it's day two now of the Ionic 5 battery. The car's been charging up overnight, so I double checked to make sure it's actually all working. And it's up to about 54% on the traction battery and the 12 volt seems to be fine i just checked it there and it's at 12.5 volts when off and 14 and a half when switched on so it's definitely working correctly now so i was making up excuses yesterday on why it was happening and why why the battery went flat we went through all the different scenarios of driving the vehicle for long distance so it wouldn't have been that and the light being on manual rather than auto so it's definitely not that either because the lights did all turn off and the interior lights were all switched off. So there's no reason for the 12 volt battery to die apart from it being not a very good 12 volt battery um, supplied by Hyundai. And yes, I did say Hyundai because we got told off by Hyundai that it's not Hyundai, it's Hyundai. We'll need to start pronouncing that properly because um, there was an actual ad campaign about that but I digress so I've had the car for a year and three months and 
The reason why I think I didn't have any issues for a while was when I picked up the car, I had to drive 170 miles home with it. And I think that gave it enough time to charge up the 12 volt battery. So if you're after a rugged wireless jump starter kit, then the one that I've got, the CXY, um, I'll put it on the description below so you guys can click on that and grab yourself one. And if you do use the link, I will get a little kickback which helps the channel grow a little bit more. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.